and thanks for joining us. Starting with the Syrian-German duo Schoon, who are breaking down geographical and language barriers through music. Schoon means what in Arabic? It's the first Arabic word that Amin, who fled Syria in 2015, taught his fellow musician Torben. They've just dropped their second album, Masrahia. It's a blend of electro and Middle Eastern storytelling. Jennifer Ben-Brahim went to meet them before their sold-out concert at Paris's Bataclan. We are Shkun. And we are in Paris's beautiful Bataclan. France 24. Yalla. Building bridges between Middle Eastern tradition and modern club culture. This is a musical manifesto of German-Syrian duo Shkun. A very neat blend of electronic sounds and Arabic folklore has helped bring different cultures together, from Berlin to Beirut, and now a sold-out show at Paris's famous Bataclan venue. Like Bataclan was on the bucket list, for sure, and it worked out time, because, yeah. like, with the historical issues that happened here, we'd like to, you know, spread the love and spread the yeah. music and spread the unity in this place. I mean, Torben, hello, and thanks for speaking to us on France 24. Uh, what can people expect from uh, your Schoon show? Maybe they're going to expect the connection, like we connect to them somehow with our feelings, with their feelings, like we both connect with each other. Maybe they're going to expect yeah. old songs that we're going to play, who knows? Yeah, it's about connecting uh, different <clears throat> cultural roots together and like finding unity with each other. Amin left Syria in 2015 during the war to find roots in Hamburg, Germany, bringing with him the traditional sounds of his country he was forced to leave. They represent everything that is great about the Arab uh, scene of today. It's interesting to see traditional songs that we know from when we are young seen in a new uh, renovated way. So. Oui, la musique électronique, c'est ça. Le, le sujet, c'est arabe aussi. C'est notre, uh, notre culture à la fin. A chance encounter with Torben led to the beginning of his musical journey. There was no planning to have a band called Shkun. There was no planning of making a project and go around the world. It was just two guys. They knew each other and they shared flat, you know, with a lot of other friends. And by coincidence, he knew that, or he heard me singing, and by coincidence, I knew that he's making music, and we decided just to jam together yeah, we, in that we, place. We clicked on, on like a lo lot of old traditional uh, Arabic poets. Like, exactly. Like, I mean, knew everything, and he showed me everything, and I was super hooked, so we needed to do something about it. Syrian folklore is really kind of at the heart of what you two do, as you were just mentioning before. Uh, you brought this to the table when you started making music together. Uh, why this choice to bring folklore into your music? Because I didn't know how to write lyrics, to be honest. <laughs> like, that was the option that... Of course, I'm connected to those songs, the folklore songs, in a way that I raised up on those songs. I witnessed stuff on it when I was, like in my past, and it reminds me of things. It brings, yeah. it, it gives me a flashback to go back to those places. And I was freshly leaving the country, and I was homesick, and that was the only connection that let me stay connected to my roots. Let's say my music, my my folklore, my tradition. This is why. <laughs> How would you describe your sound? I know it's really hard to put into one box. Yeah, it is hard. And I like to play the game. And when people ask me, like people who don't know Shkun and who don't know us, and they ask me what we do, I tell them something different every time. I, of course, like an easy way is to say we do Arabic fusion. And honestly, Boken, this is how we say it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like we, you can see it on the album, we do lots and lots of different kinds of, of, of music. We have hip hop, we did dub, we do like electronic or ambient sound. So we we do have also some exactly, classical pieces. Some classical inspired things. We, ha we do now in the show, we have an acid techno track. We have lots and lots of kind of things. I like to surprise people and say we do Arabic pop. I mean, hates <laughs> it when I say it. And it's not true. Maybe it's my wish that this is Arabic pop. To be a no, pop but star. It's a, it... You heard it here first, Arabic <laughs> pop. 
Well, speaking about your album, your album Mashahia, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, came That's out at the end of last year. Um, can you tell us what the title means and also, uh, you know, the sound behind the album? Mashahia, uh, it means a theater play. And the idea came of calling it Mashahia because, like, our life is full with uh, situations that we witness where peop you cannot define who's the oppressor and who's the victim. And then when we collected the songs, we had the idea, okay, let's do it as a theater play because we live in a huge theater. Everybody's acting, everybody put in the mask before they go out from there houses, you know. Either way they smile or they look angry, but they are different inside. Yeah, it's the constant fight of what's good and what's bad and being on the good side. All of us want, to, want this. And this is in the very small private situations and this is in the big and global scale. Exactly. And I think what stands behind is this, like to try to listen to each other more. Um, but yeah, it's not easy. Now, we were saying before that your communication style is often minimal when you're making the music. Uh, can you tell me more about that? Now, I don't live even in, Ber in Hamburg. I live in Berlin and Torben lives in <laughs> Hamburg. So when we do music, we do like we talk to each other through the music. Like yeah, we sit in the studio and just jam around. We don't even look at each other. Yeah, just... and quite, quite often it's like, you know, we, we talk through music in a way of like, I, I love the, the idea of uh, call and response. In, in music and, and instead of like when Amin plays something telling him maybe try doing it that way I, I answer him musically and something happens and that's really really fun actually. Exactly. Yeah. High five. <laughs> well that's a perfect place to end the interview. Screen thank you so much for speaking to us on France 24. Thank you thank so you much for having us. We go Jenny Ben Brahim speaking to Schoon at Paris's Bataclan. Next, 15 artists from war torn countries have come together to show the impact of forced exile, imprisonment, and conflict at a Paris exhibition. The aim is to promote resilience drawn from their own life experience. The work is on display at the Palais de Tokyo. Anaïs Laviel, Emma Guillaume, and Aurore Dupuis have made this report. <laughs> A border crossing and barbed wire. These are Randa Mada's childhood memories. Born in the Golan Heights, occupied by Israel since 1967, the artist remembers the day a group of Palestinians tried to cross the border next to her village, a scene that she wanted to put on canvas. When uh, they uh, crossed the street, just in front uh, of our house. Uh, my mother was uh, very uh, sad about the idea that a young man could be killed on the border. This is the discussion that happened between my mother and this young man. I'm here to return home to Yaffa in English. With these words, Randa wants to portray the violence of the Israeli occupation. It was very important for me to tell also this kind of stories, especially at this time uh, with all what's happening around uh, uh, in Gaza and the Middle East. Uh. Ali Akadi also wants to raise awareness through art. The Iraqi journalist photographed the Battle of Mosul in 2016 and is now breathing new life into his work. Yeah, I can hear destroying houses and bombing the town. For him, stone prints draw attention to the millions of lives that have been affected by exile. All these pictures, it's really, um, let's say, um, it's a pain of people. It's a image, it's related by pain, by war, by stories. And uh, the, the situation when I document and I go anywhere, it was really dramatic stories every time. Burma, Syria, Ukraine, the exhibition, dubbed Dislocations, reveals intimate stories from across the world. In a way, we're using the exhibition format as a political tool 
to support artists who need to exist to be seen and heard today. Dislocations addresses the consequences of past and present wars. The exhibition is on until the 30th of June at Paris's Palais de Tokyo. Now, we'll leave you with the Afghan Youth Orchestra who are embarking on a tour of England with a performance that's called Breaking the Silence. This is a tour that almost didn't take place because the UK government refused to grant them visas, but after a public outcry, the Home Office was forced to overturn their decision. The 47 exiled musicians based in Lisbon will start their tour in London this week. They'll also play in Birmingham, Manchester and Liverpool. We'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.